The health arena is one I want to go into just a bit. But uh, Sean Morrow, wave your hand back there. Uh, Sean, CEO, of course, of Bartlett, which you, you knew that, obviously. Here's a piece of this action. Sean has contributed $50,000 to our nursing program. Uh, they've got six or seven interns out there now. Uh, I used to tell the story last, for the last couple of years about uh, radiation technologists. Uh, if you hire people, and this is true of all the healthcare industries, you have the opportunity to hire uh, what's called a traveler. It's typically a 13-week contract. You've got to recruit them and transport them, give them temporary housing, give them a per diem, give them a, a rental car bonus. It costs between two and a half and three times salary. Two and a half to three times to rent a traveler. Uh, Sean spends something that's probably just under half a million dollars a year on travelers. By hiring two radiation technologists trained here, residents, uh, we have the opportunity there at Bartlett to do a cost avoidance of in excess of $200,000 $200, every single year that those students stay there because they didn't have to be replaced by what well, would have been eight 13-week contracts. I want to just explode that just a little bit. Just the health care graduates from the University of Alaska provide a cost avoidance to the health care industry of $200 million every year. Okay. Now, just to put that, see, if you, you start with this morning, you say, wow, if it makes that much difference at uh, Bartlett, well, there it is at the state. I went to the Department of Labor and I said, this is, this is, I'm getting interested in this. Can you tell me how much money has left the state of Alaska in the form of non-resident payroll since the completion of the pipeline? Because obviously before that, we had to bring in folks from all over. It wouldn't have made sense, would have confused it and given us a really distorted figure. So let's just go since the pipeline was completed. So roughly 30 years. Anybody want to take a wild guess? Do it in your head. So I'll, you, then you can raise your hand if you got it exactly. <laughs> Cumulative, cumulatively, it has been $82 billion. It's a billion and a half dollars every single year. It leaves the state of Alaska in the form of non-resident payroll. We are about the business at the university of trying to replace some of those folks who have now retired. And by the way, they took their retirement check home as well. Lost to the state of Alaska for the rest of their actuarial lives. It's a huge economic issue in the state of Alaska is the need to hire non-residents to recruit them and ship them and pay them all the money and then they turn over because they don't like it, their wife doesn't like it, their dog got sick, and all these other reasons why people spend a very small piece of their time in Alaska. Then you got to go do it again. <coughs> and there's a fix. There's an answer. Let me train them. We'll do it. 100 new programs, 85 of those programs are directly associated with the list of Alaska's most needed jobs that we get directly from the Department of Labor. That's because we are the university of the state of Alaska and our job is to respond to Alaska's needs and it's going to do that as long as I'm the president of it. But I got to tell you, can't do it without some additional support. The majority of those programs, I want you to listen to this, this is very important, because it's easy, as a matter of fact, I hear it all the time, well, our university's doing great, you guys are just really, let me tell you what, in, in, in some sense, it's a house of cards. Of those hundred new programs, virtually every single one of them 
started with industry contributions. Uh, we've got about four and a half million from the healthcare industry to start the nursing program going. From uh, BP and Conoco compact monies that Tony Knoll arranged for them uh, to pay. That's $30 million. I've doubled tuition. We've more than doubled our indirect cost recovery associated with the tremendous increase I described before in, uh, in the research. We've taken out of the university's natural resource fund uh, almost $30 million over the last eight years. Businesses have contributed this through what's now called the TVIP fund, where money from employers' contributions to retirements are reinvested in training, in training uh, fields identified by uh, the Department of Labor. This is not general fund. Now, let me understand that. It's absolutely reasonable that the university raises as much money as it possibly can on its own. But let's think about this. I'm not going to redouble tuition in the next eight years. I'm not going to get $60 million from BP and ConocoPhillips. We're not going to double the employer's contribution to TV. You see the issue. We're all in. We're all in. Every time we had additional money to invest in one of these programs, we said, let's invest in it, let's do it, let's train Alaskans. Sooner or later, we're going to realize that this is the answer, and then the legislature will give me some money to backfill these programs, which are existing on year-to-year -year funds. And I'll tell you something, would never do it any other way. The minute they replace these funds with general funds, I'm taking the funds and investing them in the next tranche of jobs because it works. It is the only way forward. I remember a story that was uh, told to me about a businessman from Kuwait who lived in America and he was, uh, he was asked many, many times, what does it feel like to be from such a rich country? And what he said was, I have to ask myself, can you be rich if you have to import your healthcare workers? If you have to import your teachers? If you have to import your engineers? He said, I've come to the conclusion that after all, we're not rich, we're simply wealthy. We have got to get this state to share some of its wealth so that the university can make you rich. May I ask, answer questions if there are some? Yes, sir. Uh, we actually uh, don't have a school of geology, but we certainly teach uh, geology at, uh, at UAF. And it's a, a pretty, pretty decent, pretty highly respected uh, course. You know, there are, let me just tell you about the schools of. I get, I get these questions. What it tells you is there's a whole bunch more needs out there. Oh, one other thing, and this just reminds me, I'll get right back to it. A little tangent here.